Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 48 days of going to your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to focus on the topic of ratio. Now ratio is a really important topic because it comes up a lot in the GCSE papers. You might be asked to write something or express something as a ratio. You might be asked to simplify a ratio. You might be asked to write a ratio in the form 1 to a certain number or a certain number 2 1. You might be asked to share a quantity in a given ratio. You might be asked to, if you're given a ratio and you know one quantity, to find the other and so on. So there's lots of different things you can be asked to do involving ratios. And it's a topic that comes up an awful lot. So it's a topic that I say is very important that you're confident with. So in terms of preparing for ratio, if you've got the Court Marriage Revision cards, card number 70 will be really useful for you. But also in today's video, we're going to focus on ratio. And it's going to be a bit longer than some of the other videos. So there's lots of different skills we've got to practice. And I'm going to give you some questions to try as well. Also with ratio, sometimes they come up with situations and contexts which you know might be unfamiliar for you. So it's very important today that you try the practice questions. So in today's video, we're going to look at ratio, so let's get started. So let's start off by looking at simplifying ratios. So the ratios of oranges to apples in a box is four to six. So here we've got four oranges and six apples. And if we're asked to simplify that ratio, what we can do is we can say, well, if it's four to six, well, if we simplify, if we divide those numbers, both of these numbers by two, you would get that be two to three. And if you have a look here, you've got four to six. And if you then divide it by two, you'd get two to three. So you've simplified the ratio. So to simplify a ratio, you can just look at the numbers in the ratio. You've got four to six. Six. Both of those numbers are divisible by 2, so you just divide both of them by 2, and then you get 2 to 3. So it's a bit like cancelling down fractions, where you just look and see what can you divide both of the numbers by, and then just cancel it down. So here's two questions for you to try. Can you simplify the ratio 45 to 15, and also simplify the ratio 36 to 48? So feel free to press pause now and to simplify these two ratios. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the ratio of 45 to 15. Well, both of these numbers are divisible by 3, they're both divisible by 5, and they're also both divisible by 15. So you could divide them by any of them, and just like simplifying fractions, you just keep on dividing until you're finished. So if I was to divide both of these numbers by 5, well, 45 divided by 5 is equal to 9, and 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. So if we divide both the numbers in the ratio by 5, we'd get 9 to 3. Now, both of these numbers are both divisible by 3, so now we can divide both of these by 3, and that'd be 3 to 1. So if you cancel down the ratio 45 to 15, you'd get 3 to 1, and that's it. Okay, our next one, 36 to 48. Well, both of the numbers, well, you can divide both of these numbers by 2, or by 3, or by 4, and so on. I'm going to divide both of them by 2 to begin with, so that'll be 18 to 24. I could divide by 2 again, that'll be 9 to 12. And I can divide both of them by 3, and that'll be 3 to 4. And that's it, we're finished, 3 to 4. So if you simplified the ratio 36 to 48, and you got 3 to 4, well done, and that's it. Okay, next, so sometimes we're asked to write ratios in the form 1 to n, or n to 1. So let's have a look at a question. I'm going to do this one for you, and then there'll be one for you to try. And we're told the ratio of adults to children on a school trip is 5 to 27. So that means that for every 5 adults there are, there's 27 children. And we've been asked to write this in the form 1 to n. So because the ratio is 5 to 27, we want it in the form 1 to n, so we want it to be 1 to something. So to get from 5 to 1, we would have to divide by 5, so we would divide by 5. So that means we also have to divide the other number by 5, so we're going to need to divide 27 by 5. So if we do 27 divided by 5, so 27 divided by 5, that's equal to 5.4. So that means that for every one adult, there's 5.4 children, and that's it. So we've written the ratio 5 to 27 in the form 1 to n. And to do that, we just thought, well, to get from 5 to 1, we'd have to divide by 5. So that means we have to divide the other number by 5, and that will give us 1 to 5.4, and that's it. Okay, now let's have a look at one for you to try. So this time we're told the ratio of adults to children at a football match is 25 to 8. And we've been asked to write this in the form n to 1. So this time we want to get the other number, the second number in the ratio, to be 1. Okay, so feel free to press pause and to try this question out yourself. Okay, so the ratio of adults to children at the football match is 25 to 8. And we want to write that in the form n to 1. So we want it to have a 1 there. We want this second number in the ratio to be 1. So to get from 8 to 1, we would have to divide by 8. So that means we're going to have to divide the 25 by 8 as well. So if we do 25 divided by 8, 25 divided by 8, that would be equal to 3.125. So that means that for every one child at the football match, there's 3.125 adults. And that's it. So we've written this ratio, 25 to 8, in the form of n to 1, a number to 1. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says a box contains white and gray beads. So there's a box with white and gray beads. And the ratio of white beads to gray beads is three to seven. So that means that for every three white beads, there are seven gray beads. So there could be three white and seven gray. There could be six white and 14 gray. There could be nine white and 21 gray. There could be 300 white and 700 gray. There could be three million white and seven million gray and so on. And the question says, what fraction of the beads are gray? Well, if we have a look at this, well, if, for instance, there were three whites, so white, 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 and gray, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if there were three white and seven gray, you would find that altogether there'd be 10 beads altogether, and seven of them are gray. So what fraction of the beads are gray? That'd be seven out of 10 or seven tenths. And that's it. Now, if, for instance, you said, well, there's six white and 14 gray, and you had another three white and another seven gray, then that would give you 14 out of 20, and then that would cancel down to be seven tenths. So that's it. So all I would do is I'd look at the ratio. So for instance, for every three white, the seven gray. So that means altogether, if there was 10 of them, seven of them are gray. So the fraction of the beads that are gray would be seven tenths. And that's it. Okay, next, our next question says, what percentage of the beads are white? Well, if seven tenths of them are gray, that means that three tenths are white, so three tenths are white. And then we want to write that as a percentage, so we just need to convert this fraction to a percentage. So we could do three divided by 10, which is 0 0.3, and then that would be 30%, so 30%. Or for instance, you could just say, well, three tenths is 30%, because you might just know it off by heart. Or you could do, for instance, three over 10, and then change it into 30 over 100, and so on. But the question is, what percentage of the beads are white? That is 30%, because three tenths of them are white, and that's 30%. If the question said what percentage of the beads are grey, that would be 70%. Okay, next. Well, next we're told that Omar says there's 91 beads in the box. Explain why he must be incorrect. Well, if we have a look at this, we're told the ratio of white to grey is 3 to 7. That means for every 3 white beads, there's 7 grey beads. Now, Omar says there's 91 beads in the box. Well, so for instance, if we had white and we had grey, well, there could be 3 white and 7 grey. And altogether, that would be, if we just write here, total, altogether, that would be 10 beads. There could be, it might not be 3 and 7, it might be, for instance, 6 and 14. And that would be, altogether, there'd be 20 beads. It could be 9 and 21, and that'd be 30 beads and so on. But if you notice, every single time, the total is a multiple of 10. Because if, and if we do 3 plus 7, that's equal to 10. So that means that the number of beads in the box must be a multiple of 10. And 91, obviously, is not a multiple of 10. So let's explain that. And that's it. I've just written down the number of beads in the box must be a multiple of 10, since 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. But 91 is not a multiple of 10, so Omar must be incorrect. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. This is one for you to try. It's a similar question where we've got a tub contains lemon and apple sweets, and the ratio of lemon to apple sweets is four to one. So that means that for every four lemon sweets, there's one apple sweet. And the question says, what fraction of the sweets are apple? And then we're asked, what percentage of the sweets are lemon? And then we're told that Omar says there are 35 sweets in the tub. Could Omar be correct? So feel free to press pause now and try these three questions. Okay, so to begin with, we know that for every four lemon sweets is one apple sweet. So it could be, for instance, lemon, 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 and one apple. So it could be five sweets in the tub, and there's four lemon and one apple. There could be eight lemon and two apple. There could be 12 lemon and three apple, and so on. But the question says, what fraction of the sweets are apple? So altogether, if we had, for instance, four and one, there'd be five altogether, and one of them's apple, so that'd be one fifth, one out of five. If, for instance, there was eight lemon and two apple, then that would be two out of 10, which would cancel down to one fifth and so on but always you would cancel it down to one fifth so there it says what fraction of the sweets are apple the answer is one fifth and you've got that well done okay next we're asked what percentage of the sweets are lemon well if we have a look here we know that one fifth of them are apple that means the rest of them four fifths is lemon we just need to change our four fifths to a percentage well four fifths is a percentage well one fifth is equal to 20 percent so four fifths would be equal to 80 percent so 80 percent of the sweets are lemon you just need to change your four fifths to a percentage and to convert a fraction to a percentage you could do four divided by five which is equal to 0 0.8 and then that would be 80 percent alternative you could just know it the four Four fifths is eighty percent, and then finally we're told that Omar says there are thirty-five sweets in the tub. Could Omar be correct? So let's have a look at the ratio. We're told the ratio of lemon to apple is four to one. That means that for every four lemon sweets, there's one apple. So you could have four lemon and one apple. 
you could have eight lemon and two apples you could have 12 lemon and three apples and so on and every single time if that means we're putting in five more sweets every single time that means the number of sweets in the tub must be a multiple of five and 35 is a multiple of five so let's explain that and that's it i've written yes he could be correct because four plus one is equal to five so the number of sweets has to be a multiple of five so it has to be a multiple of five and 35 is a multiple of five so therefore he could be correct now obviously it could be any multiple of five there could be 400 there could be 4 million there could be 20 20, there could be 75 and so on but we were asked could he be correct and he, he could be correct okay let's have a look at our next question okay let's have a look at our next question so in this question we're going to share quantity in a given ratio and this is part of the court miles revision card and it says jack and chloe share 75 pound in the ratio two to three how much do they each receive so in a question like this if we share a total or a quantity in a ratio what we just need to do is add the ratio together so we're going to do two plus three the parts in the ratio two plus three is equal to five then we're going to take our 75 pound and we're going to divide it by five because there's five parts all together so if we do 75 divided by five that'll tell us how much money is in one part so 75 divided by five is equal to 15 so that means it's 15 pound in one part in one part but Jack gets two parts and Chloe gets three parts. So to find how much money Jack gets, we're going to take our 15 pound and we're going to multiply by his number in the ratio. So 15 multiplied by two is equal to 30 pound. So that means that Jack gets 30 pound. So that's for Jack. And then in terms of Chloe, Chloe gets three parts. And remember there's 15 pound in one part. So we just need to take our 15 pound and multiply by three, her number in the ratio. 15 pound multiplied by three is equal to 45 pound. So that means that Chloe gets 45 pound. And we can check we're right here. 30 pound plus 45 pound is equal equal to 75 pound that's what we started with so just to recap if you've got a quantity that you want to share in a given ratio you just add together the parts in the ratio so 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 you take the amount of money or whatever you're sharing and you divide that by that answer so you do 75 divided by 5 it's equal to 15 and that tells you how much money is in one part or how much is in one part and then you just multiply that by each of the parts in the ratio to find out how much each person gets and that's it okay let's have a look at question now Okay, so here's a similar question for you. It says the three angles in a triangle are in the ratio five to seven to eight. So obviously there's three angles in the triangle and they're in the ratio five to seven to eight. And I want you to find the size of each angle. So feel free to press pause now and work out the size of each of the angles. Okay, so we know the angles in a triangle add up together to be 180 degrees and they're in the ratio five to seven to eight. So we just need to share 180 degrees in the ratio five to seven to eight. So let's take our five and seven and eight and add them together. So five plus seven plus eight. So five plus seven is equal to 12 plus eight is equal to 20. So there's 20 parts all together. Now let's take the total, the 180 degrees and divide that by the total number of parts, which is 20. So 180 divided by 20 is equal to nine. So that means there's nine degrees in one part. Now we just need to multiply that by the numbers in the ratio to find the size of each angle. So we're going to take our 9 degrees and we're going to multiply by 5. We're going to take our 9 degrees and we're going to multiply by 7. And we're going to take our 9 degrees and we're going to multiply it by 8. And that'll tell us the size of each of the angles. So 9 times 5 is equal to 45 degrees. 9 times 7 is equal to 63 degrees. And 9 times 8 is equal to 72 degrees. So that means the three angles in the triangle are 45 degrees, 63 degrees, and 72 degrees. And if you got that, well done. And if the question asked you what was the size of the smallest angle, you could have got the 9 degrees in one part and just multiplied by 5 to get 45 degrees. If you asked for the biggest angle, you could have taken the 9 degrees and multiplied by 8, which is 72 degrees, and so on. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next type of ratio question. So some Sometimes rather than be given the total, sometimes you're told just one of the quantities. So here we've got the ratio of lemon sweets to strawberry sweets in a tub is five to three. So in other words, for every five lemon sweets, there's three strawberry sweets. And we're told there's 40 lemon sweets in the tub. So rather than being told the total number of sweets in the tub, we're told how many lemon sweets are in the tub. And the question says how many strawberry sweets are in the tub. So we know that for every five lemon sweets, there's three strawberry sweets. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 40 and we're going to divide it by five, the lemon sweets number in the ratio. So we're going to take 40 and we're going to divide that by five and that's equal to eight and now we just need to multiply by the strawberry sweets number in the ratio which is three so eight multiplied by three is equal to 24 so this is 24 strawberry sweets so 24 strawberry strawberry sweets and that's it so in a ratio question if you're given one of the quantities you can just divide it by its number in the ratio so we've done 40 divided by five which is eight so that means there's eight sweets in one part and the strawberry sweets well we've that's got three parts in the ratio so we just take the eight multiplied by three and that's equal to 24 so there's 24 strawberry sweets in the tub and if the question instead of saying how many strawberry sweets are in the tub it said how many sweets are in the tub in total we could just do 40 plus 24 is equal to 64 so there'd be 64 sweets altogether and that's it okay let's have a look at our next question 
Okay, so here's one for you to try. So the question says a box contains yellow and green counters, and the ratio of yellow to green counters in the box is 5 to 6. And then we're told there's 90 yellow counters in the box. How many counters are there in total in the box? So feel free to press pause now to try this question. Okay, so in this question, rather than being told the total number of counters in the box, we're told there's 90 yellow counters. So we're going to take that 90 and we're going to divide it by the yellow number in the ratio, which is 5. Because we know that 5 parts is equal to 90 counters, so we can take 90 and divide it by 5. So 90 divided by 5, that's the yellow number in the ratio, yellow to green, 5 to 6. So that's divided by 5, the yellow number in the ratio. So 90 divided by 5 is equal to 18. So that means it's 18 counters in one part. And then if we take that 18 and multiply it by 6, that'll tell us how many green green counters there are. So 18 multiplied by 6 is equal to 18 times 6 is equal to 108. So that means there's 108 green counters, 108 green counters. But in this question, rather than asking us how many green counters there are, it says how many counters are there in total. So we know there's just yellow and green counters in the box. We know there's 90 yellow and we know there's 108 green. So if we do 90 plus 108, that's equal to 198 counters. And that's it. So how many counters are in the box? 198. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, now let's have a look at another type of ratio question. So this time we're told a farmer keeps sheep, cows and chickens. And the ratio of sheep to cows is 4 to 3. And the ratio of cows to chickens is 10 to 7. And the question says find the ratio of sheep to cows to chickens. So in this question we're given two different ratios. And then we're asked to find a ratio that combines both of those. So let's do that. So I've just written sheep, cows and chickens. And then we're told the ratio of sheep to cows in the farm is 4 to 3. So sheep to cows is 4 to 3. Let's write that down. Sheep to cows is 4 to 3. And we're also told the ratio of cows to chickens is 10 to 7. So the ratio of cows to chickens is 10 to 7. So I'm just going to write 10 to 7 there. Now we want to find the ratio of sheep to cows to chickens. So we want to convert that as one ratio. We want to have one ratio of sheep to cows to chickens. Now if we have a look here, we know for every three cows there's four sheep. And we know that for every ten cows there's seven chickens. So if we had, for instance, 30 cows, well if we had 30 cows, and I've chosen 30 because there's a common multiple of 3 and 10, you could have chosen 60 or 300 and so on, but I've just chosen the lowest common multiple of 3 and 10, which is 30. And if we had, for instance, 30 cows, well if we had 30 cows, well, if there's 30 cows, it would be 40 sheep. Because to get from 3 to 30, we multiply that by 10. And then we multiply the 4 by 10. And 4 multiplied by 10 is equal to 40. So if we had, for instance, 30 cows, there would be 40 sheep. And now, if we look at the other ratio, for every 10 cows, there's 7 chickens. Well, to get from 10 to 30, we multiply by 3. So that means if we multiply 7 by 3, that will mean that there would be 21 chickens. So, for instance, if we know for every 10 cows, there's 7 chickens. If we had 30 cows, that would be 21 chickens. Now, this is a ratio. The ratio of sheep to cows to chicken would be 40 to 30 to 21. And that can't be cancelled down. So that's it. That's our ratio of sheep to cows to chickens. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So our last question says, a box contains red, blue, and orange beads. And the ratio of red beads to blue beads is 5 to 2. The ratio of orange beads to red beads is 7 to 3. And I want you to find the ratio of blue to orange beads. So feel free to press pause and try this question out yourself. Okay, so if we have a look at this, what I'm going to do to begin with is, um, I'm going to write down, because we're told there's red, blue, and orange beads in the box. I'm going to start off by just writing down red, blue, and orange. And then let's write down the ratios we've been told. We're told the ratio of red to blue beads is 5 to 2. So for every 5 red beads, there's 2 blue beads. So 5 to 2. For every 5 red beads, there's 2 blue beads. Then we're told that the ratio of orange to red beads is 7 to 3. So that means for every 7 orange beads, there's 3 red beads. So for every 7 orange beads, there's 3 red beads. So now let's combine these two ratios together as one single ratio. So what we're going to do is, well, we know for every five red beads, there's two blue beads. And we know for every three red beads, there's seven orange beads. So if we look at the five and the three and find a common multiple, I'm going to find the lowest common multiple of five and three, and that's 15. I think 15 is a good number to choose. So to get from five to 15, we multiply by three. So if we multiply the two by three, two times three, that's equal to six. So because we knew that for every five red beads, there's two blue beads, if we had 15 red beads, beads, it'd be six blue beads. So that makes sense. Now, if we have a look at the next ratio, we had for every three red beads, there were seven orange beads. So to get from three to 15, we multiply by five. So if we multiply the seven by five, that's equal to 35. And that's equal to 35. And that's fantastic. We now know the ratio of red to blue to orange beads 
in this box. It's 15 to 6 to 35. So for every 15 red beads, the 6 blue beads and 35 orange beads. And the question says write down the ratio of blue to orange beads. So we just need to look at these two numbers. The ratio of blue to orange would be 6 to 35. 6 to 35. And that can't be cancelled down. So that's it. And if you got that, well done. You've done really, really well. And that's it. So I really hope you found this video on ratio useful. As I said, it's a very important topic to do, do the practice questions. And I'll put a link to those in the description below. And obviously, there's a lot of time to go between the now and the exam. There's 48 days to go. So make sure that you regularly come back to the topic of ratio. And that's why it's important to do things like your five a days and make sure that you're doing your university foundation and foundation plus five a days because you'll regularly see a ratio up between now and the exams. So keep up the good work. You're doing incredibly well. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next video at three o'clock. Cheers. Bye.